<laughs> well <laughs> deserved. All right. As I uh, said, I'm Joshua Dawson. I'm a county agent for Blue Valley State and Station in Lyons County for the past. We're going on nine years in November 11th exactly. Coming up. I've <laughs> been here nine years. I uh, work with all the, we're pretty much all the ag here in the county. Homeowners, farmers, community gardens, and we'll be uh, school gardens here. But I'll give you a few back up for us just the last month. Just an update on what I've been up to. Uh, we've had some day of that ag expo. Last year was canceled due to COVID, but this year we're wide open. Um, one particular project, if you check your desk there, it's the Mobile Farm Innovation Unit. Um, this is a project through Fort Valley, Texas, uh, Alabama a and Auburn Extension, and the uh, Farmers Union. And uh, we came together and worked on a grant through the USDA to where we have these mobile classrooms. During the pandemic, when buildings shut down, it was harder to get out and get these educational programs, especially with um, growers needing pesticide credit. So I was getting calls saying, my license is about to expire. How am I going to get this credit? How am I going to do this? So we came up with this idea that, hey, how about we don't go to them and have an outdoor setting? Um, this is one of the trailers. This is actually my trailer that's house here in Lyons County, uh, one of three ones in Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi, like I said, the Georgia ones located right here. Uh, we do hand wash stations, um, teach them how to do irrigation, talk about mainly food safety. Um, everything we do is low cost to try to, it's really geared towards small and medium farms. We can't afford just to say, they'll go and put in a walk-in freezer, but there's one particular unit, which like the children have to build, is called Cool Bar, using a regular window unit to where you can pretty much jailbreak it to where it can get down to 36 degrees in a walk-in temperature. Um, if you hunt, some people use it for their walk-in coolers. Um, if you ever see somebody with one on a tow behind trailer and a window unit, it's probably more than likely this where they got to keep their produce or meat or any other products cool enough. Um, that's been a big hit. I just matter of fact, uh, Saturday I went to the uh, meat, the sheep meat uh, lines of Florida and did a uh, presentation on it. But most of them say, well, with this humidity, we can't keep our bulk feed long enough because it molds up. Or if they want to store seed for the next year, they can't because it molds up so bad. Well, I told them, well, if you get an insulated trailer, insulated little garden shed, put one of these in there, um, it shows to, in the booklet, which each one participants to get how exactly how to go through and build it. Um, the cost savings on a walk-in one compared to one of these is about, about $3,000 cheaper. And then once this goes out, instead of waiting for somebody to bring in a compressor generator, you go to Walmart, Home Depot, spend $70, you make a business. Um, that's the main thing. It's doing a lot of hands-on training for what we're doing with growers. I've had one here with citrus growers had a great um, outcome, and they really liked it. And we're looking at playing this more for next year. But that's our dean right there giving an interview with uh, WALB and um, some of students who were interested in took a picture in front of me there at the expo. I have any questions, feel free to stop me. Um, that's me. I did the uh, garden demonstration as far as irrigation with uh, Flint River Fresh. Um, like, uh, Juan Fredo, he came down here. Y'all might have seen him on TV and all of it. He came down here a few years ago, toured our school gardens here, and uh, we've been connected ever since. And they reached out to me about doing the irrigation training for the site. And I had people from inside the state, of course, and people from far South Carolina, Texas, who came to the expo. Questions about irrigation, drip tape, and you see in my hand I have different emitters, and I've walked through them during the day. I taught three classes, one a day. Uh, update this is the Valdosta City School Garden the Orchard Project, and as well as the Community Garden there you'll see. Um, one without the kids there, that's at Hudson Docket. We're working with the volunteer there, trying to get it established and to maintain it. Um, right now, we're in the planting stages with. About city schools with, with uh, leafy green crops, and also uh, Miss Georgia Earth has been assisting us with it. We're going around with each of the uh, schools in the massive funeral. Our massive gardener is Amy B. She's been um, excellent with it. Uh, research I've been working on some research trials, uh, just two that are kind of wrapped up where the uh, soybean nematode sampling. Um, they are looking for a particular nematode that's really particular soybeans that can infect it. So I went around to the local farmers here, reached out to them, took some soil samples, free of cost for them. These samples usually cost about $27 a piece. And I took one from eight different fields here and um, four different growers.
numbers just to see what this rules had in it. And um, hopefully they'll come back naked. That we got fingers dropped. This is our normal needle toes. <laughs> nothing too fancy. Um, a burrow bug light trap. Um, in peanuts, they have a bug called burrow bug that can eat peanuts and make the grade go down. Uh, this year, didn't see too many of it just because of the rain. I mean, we had an average of over 73 inches in most spots of rain this year. It was a great rain gauge, but it didn't catch any bugs, which, which was good. But rain this year has really slowed growth into getting in the fields. And that kind of goes to um, just each year is never the same growth. And also, what I'm talking about with my mobile unit as well, I'm still doing online trainings through Fort Valley State. If you look on your and downstairs, I got a uh, production meeting where we got a meeting coming up, record keeping and um, production decision work with Ag South. Uh, Ag South has been great working with us. Um, a lot of these trainers that they are new in person, you can actually get pre qualified for a loan. That's great for new and beginning farmers. Uh, we've done a state planning workshop. Uh, that's been a big, a big um, deal here, like especially some of your small areas property. We're dealing with a lot more that and trying to help them work through the negotiations, especially uh, family-wise, it's been a, it's been a hard, hard time. <clears throat> but like I said, it's on Facebook, we'll on Facebook Live, we do it through Zoom. Uh, we used to have great turnouts for those, and we also record them and um, put them on the YouTube channel for the uh, FDSU ad page. Uh, harvest is on the way. Um, the summer, luckily, we was able to get some dry weather here, and peanuts, being harvested, cotton being defoliated. Peanuts was near the end countywide as far as harvest. Uh, this rain may set us back a little bit. Uh, we were already set back about a week um, before that, but like I said, it's been a tough go at it this year. I've never seen this many truck, uh, trucks, tractors stuck in fields. I never had to use this much forward drive in my life to get, to get around. I mean, it's just been a, a very wet season, a very tough season. And it's usually dry, I've never seen this time <laughs> for us. Uh, again, and also, set soon starting to come in. The uh, beginning of November, they'll really start picking and start getting into production. As you can see, those right there are starting to turn very well. Those are our quarries. Um, and also, pecans are, on, are being harvested as well. I don't have a picture in here, but vegetables also is on the way. You know, they've been on the way as far as harvesting. And I was just praying for no early frost, but everybody keeps talking about it, so it might probably don't happen. Uh, also, with all the work I've done with um, grants and helping to get like the mobile unit and some other uh, hands-on training as far as marketing, uh, record keeping for growers, I was awarded uh, the uh, for expanding research in post-pandemic world for um, a grant deal of scholarship work through uh, Fort Valley State University. Uh, in conclusion, we're doing been pretty much busy, uh, just some side stuff. Uh, Homeowner brings in the leaf, has to help and identify them. Uh, farmers have an issue with uh, sweet potatoes, have to identify the disease. And as well, we had a loose cow in the road, kept kind of <laughs> crowding them in. That was a busy two, three weeks where we just kept being cow calls. Just, <laughs> usual, it's like, well, that, that doesn't happen much. And then all of a sudden, it just keeps happening, keeps happening. But um, I was able to steer them back up to the, uh, the um, pen stick. But uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. My contact information is on this brochure, uh, my email, and my uh, cell phone. And if y'all have ever want to stop by, take a look at the trailer, please feel free to do so. We want to let y'all know too about our local hog show. Let's see, the showmanship starts on Monday, the November the first, at five o'clock, and then the actual show will be at six o'clock on the second, and then that Wednesday at seven will be the show. So I want to invite you all out to that. And again, if you have any questions, not hard to reach. That's my cell right there on the uh, pamphlet and email. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And oh, before, this is a scholarship through the 1980s program uh, through the USDA. Uh, students can apply for if they, they're able to win and get in. You'll actually get an internship that's locked in for your entire college career and they pay for college and they give you a job after college. So, and then I also found out that internship hours goes toward your retirement. So, <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a pretty sweet day. I wish I wouldn't known about it, but all <laughs> the uh, 1890s institutions like Fort Valley offer this scholarship. So if y'all have any students or are interested, 
please uh, let me know and I'll point you in the right direction. Yeah. Any questions for Josh? Josh. Yes, sir. Is there any way to bring back the ham and egg show? That would take some renovating and um, coming together and trying to figure out what works for this day and time. And now I was thinking about that the other day when I do this cool bar, because you can make your own now walk in freezers at home. And that's been the biggest thing is keeping the temperatures in which store. So there are some possibilities, but it also going to take some innovation and creativity to bring it back. Is anybody working on that? Not to my knowledge. Like I said, with, with COVID, especially, it really slowed us not to pay. And we're trying to, like I said, now put more miles on me and trying to get out there to make sure I'm uh, right there with the growers and with the community as much as possible. Any other questions? Josh, I just want to take this opportunity just to thank you for all the work that you do here in Lowndes County. Uh, I talk to a lot of folks out there in the ag community, community and your name just keeps coming up. It just keeps coming up with the great job that you're doing for them. You're working for them. You're very aggressive on what their needs are. You do the research to help them with, to uh, get their questions answered. And so again, as Ms. Dukes said, you are a rising star in this community and very well respected for your ability and what you do for our ag industry. So we certainly appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Like I said, if y'all need anything to the police, feel free to reach out to me. I'm not hard. I'll try to make it hard. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.